One is Google Chrome, which I prefer when it comes to my Windows operating system, and another is Firefox, which, while I love Chrome, Firefox is the best when it's come to the Linux community. It's open source. It's been friends with the Linux community for a very long time. It's available on most of the distributions and performs flawlessly on most of them. It has a huge library of extensions and other capabilities, and it's just really friendly when it comes to the Linux operating systems. <coughs> Um, Chrome is also awesome and allows you to do many of those same op things but is just not quite as tailored to Linux as Firefox has been and so therefore I put Firefox as number one in that category. Number two is an app called BleachBit. Now for people that are familiar with the Linux uh, operating systems you don't really need this type of application. You could actually clean out your entire system using the terminal. However, many people who are transitioning from Windows or Apple uh, straight to a Linux operating system do not not want to mess with the terminal, especially with cleaning out all their files because they're afraid that they might delete the wrong ones, which they very well could. So you, there's only really one application that's ever been proven to be very stable and capable of performing the, of the same jobs that an app such as CCleaner or uh, <clears throat> IOBit software on the Windows machines has been able to do, and that is BleachBit. And it is pretty capable. It can clean out your entire system, which is old package files, old installation, temporary files, old backups, uh, all of your browsers, all of your most third-party apps, and can do this pretty fast and fluidly, and that just pretty much involves you searching and then cleaning out your files, which on some machines that have built up quite an amount of data could release 10, 15, 20, maybe even 30 or more t gigabits of data. Number three on this list is uh, Get It Text Editor. Now, while there are many popular text editors out there for Linux distributions, such as Kate, Sublime, Vim, etc., Get It is my absolute favorite because it's lightweight, very applicable to all of the distributions, and very powerful. And regardless of what you're using a text editor for, rather, that is just to make quick notes, write something, a letter, or to write programs and software, you will need a text editor on any operating system, regardless if it's in or regardless if it's OS 10 or uh, Windows or Linux. <clears throat> Number four on this list is going to be LibreOffice and that is simply because everyone needs a writing or uh, presentation or calculating or uh, some type of office software if you're going to have a computer. <clears throat> um, regardless if you're a student, uh, at home mom or uh, someone that's involved in the business industry and on Linux distributions there's really only been two major options and that is between OpenOffice and, Li and LibreOffice. Recently LibreOffice has really taken the lead and therefore has taken number one on my list for getting the best and most seamless performance while also having a decent UI. <coughs> Number five on this list is VLC Media Player, and for people who are not familiar, VLC is pretty much the most popular media player in the world because it's very powerful, it is available on all operating systems, it has a huge database and library of codecs, and can pretty much play any type of audio or video file off the bat on any operating system you have. <coughs> And it's very compatible with most of them and uh, even most Linux distributions and it's free and open source so VLC all the way number six on this list is GIMP and for people who love photo uh, editing and to create animations and whatnot and love Photoshop, well Photoshop isn't really an option on a Linux distribution. You could always try making it work with Wine, but that would require some extensive work and GIMP works straight out of the box after you install it. And that stands for the GNU Image Manipulation Program. <coughs> hence G and U up there at the top. And uh, it is pretty much the only true competitor uh, in the open source and free world that can compete with Photoshop and is very powerful at what it does even though it might not look as beautiful while it does it. Number seven is an app that I particularly don't have installed on my com on this system particularly and that is the Thunderbird email manager and it is built by Mozilla who is the same team that designed the Firefox browser. It has pretty much been the boss hog of the email manager management uh, applications for a long time now and it's still really good at what it does. While I particularly have no use for uh, such a software, many people do and I highly recommend it if you're going to use uh, such a, t a program.
<clears throat> Number eight is also a piece of software I don't particularly have installed on this system because uh, I really don't like uh, having to pay for um, this type of application when I have it uh, running for free on my Windows machine. But that is the Steam uh, Community uh, Gaming application or Gaming Launcher, and that is built by the Steam by SteamPower.com and uh, the Steam Community, which is the largest uh, gaming community on the net and it's awesome it's able to do a lot of things uh, I, the reason that they actually charge I'm pretty sure is so that they can build more support for Linux and get the funding for it but uh, I really do like it and uh, unfortunately I have it on a Windows machine so I have no use for it on this Linux machine anyway considering there are much more games available on Windows uh, but the gaming community is, is, is really working hard on getting more on Linux platforms and uh, I think that maybe 10 years from now there will be almost as many games at, on a Linux machine as there are on Windows or an Apple machine. So <coughs> kudos to Steam. Keep on going guys. Number 9 on this list is an app called Audacity and it is pretty much the most popular open source and free audio editing utility on the web regardless if you're using uh, Linux, Apple or Windows and um, or in Apple's case uh, OS X Yosemite um, and it's pretty much the best you have. Uh, there are more professional commercial um, softwares that cost uh, a lot more money that can do a better job but Audacity is the best and, and it's for free and uh, you can be your own DJ so rather you're just wanting to mess with audio uh, fix some uh, audio for a video or if you wanted to create a presentation or if you're an, inspi if you're, uh, an inspired uh, beginning music artist and you don't really have too much funds to go and create and purchase all of this studio software Audacity is the way to go so definitely check that one out. Last on this list is an app that particularly pertains to Pandora and, Pan and by Pandora I mean the very popular, most popular uh, music streaming service in the world and um, which is great. I love Pandora. I'm a subscriber. Unfortunately, unless you have a Pandora One account, you also have to deal with tons of ads and the skip limits, which uh, is understandable considering you know they have to pay their bills and they don't charge anyone unless you use Pandora One. So, but. Uh, Pythos is actually an app that's developed only for Linux distributions, I believe, um, and it allows you to play your pan your favorite Pandora stations from your account without skip limits and without ads, which is awesome. And if you're not using Pandora, this is the type of app that can inspire people to want to use Pandora. So I love it. It's very, it's very, very, very fluid, and it's pretty much flawless on any. Uh, Linux distribution that I've used. Uh, it's fantastic. Good audio, and I really love it. So that was the list of my uh, 10 favorite and what I consider most uh, popular and must have pieces of software um, for a Linux system.